Hello and welcome back for the second part of Re-Sound Designing Hollow Knight. Last time I showed you what was happening under the hood of the music production and today we're going to talk about follies and about whoosh effects. Let's go! As you can see we'll need to create sound effects on the boss attacks as well as on the player's character. And for that purpose I'll be using two different objects. One is a long USB cable and the other one is an elastic band. I record everything with a small membrane cardioid microphone. If you don't know much about microphones, all you need to know is that this one hears better what's close and in front of it. I'm trying a few different movements and speed, which will give me different frequencies and energies. And this will be useful later on during the editing part. But to understand that, we need to define what a whoosh effect is, factually. It's basically a sound sweeping from a low frequency to a higher one, fast, and with some air moving. So from what I recorded earlier, here are the three different parts I've decided to put together, respectively the low, mid, and high ones. And once they're all together, it sounds like this. It's already a nice effect, but we can improve it. Since there is air movement close to the microphone, I'm adding a low cut filter. I'm also adding a compressor, to bring a bit of a punchy effect. And finally, I lowered down a bit the pitch because I had found it to be a bit too high. So now it sounds like this. Additionally, I've added some white noise, which is something sounding like this when it's alone. So it's not very sexy when it's alone, but the idea is to trigger automatically a bit of this sound each time we'll hear our whoosh sound. And to finish, I have sent it to a plate reverb. Let's have it a listen with the music. Now that we have what I would call all the horizontal attacks of the boss, we still have two other things to do. Namely, when he goes up, so it corresponds to the red markers in the session, and the other one when he gets down, so the blue markers. Remember I had put a plugin to change the pitch at some point? So what we can do is to make the pitch automation curve visible. Let's lower our pitch a bit when the boss gets down. Doing the same on the other one. And since it's supposed to be a heavier attack, we'll make them both a bit louder. Perfect, we can get rid of the markers and focus on the jumping now. I'll just copy a part of the effect we just made and I'll simply reverse it. Using the same sound but reversed brings unity to the movement itself. It's a bit like when you pull a string and it comes back. Alright, let's copy. Great, we are done with the boss and we can take care of the second character. At this stage I'd like to talk about the tool we'll be using later on, which happens to be an elastic band to do sports. 
Mm. But we can use it for other stuff. Uh, it's really handy to do whooshes, of course, but also, for example, if you have a um, bow aiming on screen, it's really nice. Really nice. Uh, it can also be used if you're doing follies for cinema and you have a character with, let's say, a leather jacket. You can bring a bit of this sound texture. You can add it to the footsteps and it will bring a bit more of credibility on screen. But let's go back to bushes. Back to our session. As you can see, we have a bunch of new markers, but it will be okay. I've selected four wishy sound from the ones we just recorded, to which I've had two effects, a pitch correction and a low cut. Let's isolate the first one and see with the image. Let's make a copy that we will reverse. Adjusting the fades and putting the reversed element first. Let's put them where they should be. Okay, now is the funny part when we just do manually what normally an algorithm would do. By that I mean normally when you work in the developing team as a sound designer or musician, you can have access to something called a middleware, which is a software connected to the other software you use to create the game. And you can use algorithms to generate randomly from, for example, a bank with several samples. And it's just chosen randomly, which is what we have to simulate manually here. So that's why it looks so messy, but it will work. Now we will focus on our four pink markers, corresponding to the first attacks, which are a bit different from the other ones. You'll see that in a second, but basically they are just a bit longer. I'm taking these two clips I've already used before, but it's okay since we'll modify them a bit. Starting with the pitch, which will be higher this time. And if you remember how we defined a whoosh, we will just exaggerate the frequency sweeping with our pitch curve. We'll be adding an effect directly on our clip, which will be a plate reverb. Let's make a 50-50 balance between the sound of the clip and the reverberated sound. We can now copy the clips and adjust the pitch curve to make sure it follows the actual movement on screen. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, don't hesitate to like, comment or subscribe. In the next video, we'll make more diverse follies and sound effects like the boss scream and some other very squishy effects. So stay tuned and see you next time.